Hey guys, it's Carol, and I appreciate you stopping to check out what is we'll call my very first knitting vlog. Do people even still vlog anymore? Like, I always thought that was a weird word, but this is probably the closest to what we'll call it. I'm, I've been doing a fair amount of knitting over the last couple, probably six weeks. It all started with I met a friend of a friend, if you will, because where I live, I swear everybody knows someone, like I'm never more than two degrees from a person. Doesn't matter how old the connection is. It's so weird. And I've only lived in this particular spot for four years. Um, but as a result, I was talking and it was so exciting to meet someone in person who does crafts. Lots of people will tell you about the people they know in their lives that are like crafty, but people who are willing to tell you, yes, I knit, or yes, I do needlepoint. I actually have both of those type of people in my life. But anyway, this was my like first prime meeting knitting in real life in a long time. And it was just exciting. And I realized, hey, you know what? I have projects that I had put down and needed to pick back up. So then I've been doing some more knitting and I looked at my Instagram and I realized, oh, I've been putting my like knitting going on and not necessarily my cross stitch. So the reality is I love crafting, I love making things, and I mean, I like making textiles, I making, like making things from textiles. So this like, it all to me goes together, but I didn't want to clog my cross stitch videos with knitting. So here I am. So a little bit about me, I consider myself a new knitter, um, which is to say I did not really learn as a child. No, that's not 100% true. My mom is a crocheter, like crochets like a beast. If you need an afghan done for a baby shower last week, my mom's already done three of them for you and I don't even know where she finds the time, but she is so like amazingly talented at it. And meanwhile, when I crochet, um, I actually stopped crocheting because I my tension's so bad, it was making, and it was always my left wrist. It would show up on my left wrist first, I don't know why, because you think I do it, I'm right-handed, but whatever, it would show up in my left wrist, but then really like a ton of tension, really hurt, so crocheting wasn't working for me. I also never really finished crochet projects because the only crochet projects I want to pick up were afghans, and I never actually commit myself to finishing big ass blanket projects. We'll just go with that. And then I realized like I had this one booklet and it was a cheapy, I don't even remember the brand. It's upstairs, but I'm not gonna go grab it right now. But anyway, it was one of these like eight easy afghans to make and my favorite one was one with cabling because it was knitted. I realized maybe, maybe I should actually like get serious about knitting. So going back to my mom, she would use like some of that waste yarn left over from all of her crocheting magic and she would occasionally cast on I will say like 15, 20 stitches on a straight aluminum needle, you know the type. If you're older than about 10, you've seen these because this is like the classic knitting needle. Um, and so I, she would cast it on for me and she taught me how to do a knit stitch. Not a purl stitch, no increases, no decreases. Couldn't even like bind off. And I never even learned how to cast on. I literally could make a knit stitch. Um, turns out my mom, I don't know, I guess she had sort of learned as a child or not learned. I'm not entirely certain and I don't, wouldn't want to speak for her, but she was confident enough to teach me how to knit. Specifically, wrapping around bunny, th what, is, there's like something about a bunny around a tree or something, I don't know. This is how good I am at remembering stuff, I have no idea. But I knew how to do that. So then I cracked the code, all I had to do was figure out, so I could garter stitch up a storm. I don't particularly like garter stitch, so that was not a good fit for me. <laughs> anyway, so I decided in 2010 that I was going to learn how to knit for real. And it was because I decided I was going to make a scarf. I don't know why, it was just a thing. Um, and as that thing, I was like, okay, I didn't go to Michael's. I actually went to a LNS, like pretty much first thing. It happened to be near the grocery store and I was dragging two, one toddler, one infant, and I went there when I was going to be doing my grocery shopping. So that means I showed up at the LNS at 6 p.m. on the dot. Now, if, at the time, I had no idea. Um, if you know anything about a lot of like 
locally owned craft stores, the fact that it was even open at six and was not closing up, I happened to get there when they were doing their stitch night from like six to eight. Totally, I had no idea. Like, and later I was like, oh, oh man, I'm super, I mean, they had employees and she was happy. Like I walked out of there with like five skeins of Cascade 128 for making a lot blanket that I wanted to crochet because I did walk in insisting I was a crocheter. I'm not really much for knitting, but I'd really like to try this one scarf. And so, and then I got two skeins of um, Barocco Vintage. My very first project that I knit was a scarf. Now, I didn't know enough to say that a scarf, now it's a rectangle, so that makes it easy. I didn't have to know any increases or decreases. I just needed to figure out a cast on, how to bind off, I already knew how to knit, and I'd sort of figured out that purling business, but this was gonna give me a lot of practice. Unfortunately, that practice was like 72 inches long, so it took me over a year to get it done. Because I, I didn't realize the premise I was also gonna get bored along the way, because uh, that's one of the downsides to scarves. I can do them faster now, but I don't necessarily find them any less boring, but we'll come back to that. So anyway, I did get this scarf done, and unfortunately, all I can do is show you a picture of the scarf. Ding. Um, the problem, I lost it last year. Um, I think I lost it over at a friend's house. There was, it was a party, there was a bazillion people there, and, and not just a bazillion people, but a ton of kids, and all the winter clothes, like all the, except they all just got mushed in a pile together, never did find it again. And so I'm really hoping that someone has enjoyed that scarf somewhere. It was a really great first knitting project. I loved the yarn and honestly really durable. So that rib scarf has been going along with me. And then I was like, okay, so the Cascade 128 that came home with me, I was intending on crocheting a lap blanket. Never did find a crochet pattern that worked for it because only five skeins doesn't actually, with crochet, you ate up a ton of room. And I, and so I ended up knitting a blanket. That took a long time to pick something. Finally went with a feather and fan pattern blanket. And I'm gonna show you the picture but I don't have it anymore because my dogs over time just absolutely destroyed it. Thanks dogs. Um, that's okay because it was always in it, it never quite worked with my decor. So since then I've honestly made a lot of things. I've made a number of hats, a couple pairs of socks. I am not a sock knitter by the way. Um, I try and then I realize it's just not fun. I don't, I've tried any combination from little nine inch circulars to double pointed needles to magic loop and I just don't like making socks. I prefer the ones I buy at the store because I prefer a finer gauge than I can get, like even a fingering weight is just too heavy for what I like to wear. Now that said, my husband loves the socks because the very first pair of socks I made, they were supposed to be for my feet, came out too big. Oops, but they are perfect for his and he still wears them. And I made them in like 2012, 2013. I don't know, it's been a while. So that's, but my favorite is honestly sweaters. Um, this, this is my favorite sweater I've ever knit because it is the perfect winter item. So it is the Georgetown cardigan from Home and Away. I was a real sucker for a while. Every time I'd go in my LNS, if they had basically a new book um, by the cash register, I would buy it even if I had no intention of making it. But anyway, um, I do, I have like three, we'll say three and a half because I also have um, the first one that she did um, with the, other person from the Never Not Knitting. I can't remember the name of it right now. Anyway, so I have like a bunch of her books because I just really enjoy flipping through them. Anyway, the Georgetown Cardigan, which I'll give you a better picture of it. And I decided that it was totally something I need in my life. I love cardigans, but I hate buttons. So for me, a, we'll call this a shawl collar, is absolutely perfect. I love, I don't love knitting it, but I love like ribbing after the fact. So this is the most amazing, perfect, slightly grainy. So I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see like the cuffs. I normally wash it on an as needed basis, which just only works out about twice a year. Um, the miracle of wool is it almost, it likes to de-stink itself pretty well. So if I keep as long as I keep tomato sauce off of it. And yes, I get tomato sauce on here because I wear my sweaters while cooking spaghetti. Yeah. 
But no, I mean, that's the thing is that I, I love the finished items that I make. So that's where I was like, I wanna share what I have going on right now. Now, like any good crafter, I have too much stash. I have, when I bought, got into knitting and once I figured out how to knit, I went to town. I bought all the things. Um, Y'all, I de-stashed only about a quarter through my Etsy shop over two years, but I still have a lot of stuff. Oops. Um, problem is, I'm a very slow knitter, which is fine. Like, that's something I'm working on, but not the speed thing. The acceptance, the speed I'm at is probably the speed I'm going to be at. I mean, a bit after 13 years, yes, I'm a new knitter, but I think I'm going to consider myself a new knitter until I'm like 90, so... That's fine. Um, the problem is I have a tendency to start projects, not finish them, so then I don't start, and so my stash had been growing and growing because I was buying faster than I could actually make. Well, I finally got smart and stopped buying any yarn. And then I realized, okay, this missing scarf I mentioned, well, I need a new scarf. So that was like the, this and combined with having met like I said, my new knitting acquaintance that knitting needed to come back in my life. The first project that I rescued from knitting purgatory, limbo, yeah, we'll call it limbo, knitting limbo, is my Florence cardigan. And the designer for this is Carrie Bostic Hoge. And I bought this, I think, pretty much as soon as it ended up in my inbox, the promo email for that, which was like 2014. And I didn't even start until 2019. It's 2023. And it's still not done. The intent for this when I started back in 2019 was I needed a cardigan for church. A summer cardigan. Uh, I prefer to have my shoulders covered and I have like one summer weight like bought from the store cardigan. I don't love it because it it folds weird that there's like a perma crease in the bottom band and I just was like okay so I had in stash what is this um knit one crochet two cosette and this is the old formulation um per the Ravelry info the mill changed sometime around sometime after I bought this this is a clearance item that I bought in like 2013. Um, yeah, you'll know, and it's still in a tank. Go me. Um, this is, was supposed to be a relatively easy pattern. It's Now, the thing is, though, this is a fingering weight, and this is the first garment. Like, not socks. First, like, big project in a fingering weight. I don't know if that was a bright idea. Um, so this is a predominantly silk, 62% silk, 30% cotton. Um, I thought it was gonna be very, like, silk cotton sounds very fancy. It's not, this is very rustic feeling. There's a lot of slubs in it. Um, it's okay. It knits up nicely enough, but it's not my favorite. I do like the color. It's a pretty sea glass. And this is where I'm stuck at. Oh, I don't need to like knock that off. I totally will, by the way, but anyway, um, the back and sides are knit from the bottom in one piece. There's a lace edging right here that obviously looks much better when it's blocked out. It's a really easy um, to memorize repeating pattern. So um, I had this sitting on here for two two years yeah because i started the first sleeve in 2021 two and a half years we'll call it two and a half years because it was actually the spring of that year um sleeve one still obviously you see not attached um it's a raglan sleeve construction never done one of those before so that'll be fun and new um i only got this sleeve done First of all, it's been knit like twice because the first time I knit it, I realized it was gonna be massively too tight per the, oh, my arms. And I had, or, cause I had to go super down in needle size to hit um, gauge on this. And yes, I actually did 
a gauge swatch. I hate doing gauge swatches, but I do them because I've had stuff grow weirdly in the past. So I did know I needed to like, I am knitting this on size three needles, but it was the original is cast on, just it didn't accommodate my arms. So I had to go back, rip it back, start over again. It's, this poor thing is like a wreck. Um, but that's okay. First sleeve is done. And second sleeve, which look at that, is actually, I've done all this since October 7th. So under, right around a month. Um, I just honestly need to uh, wind a new ball of yarn because I ran out. Um, this one also was my first opportunity to enjoy learning magic knots for um, yarn joining because I had this around a pile of dogs and one of the dogs mistook my ball of yarn for his ball and ran off with it snapping my yarn right in the middle of the lace but I was already like two inches into the lace I'm like I'm not backing this up but I needed I was like okay so I'm gonna try it um I actually am happy with how the magic knot came out like I said it's my very first go with it I can't see it. I can feel it with my fingers. Like I had literally just found the spot while doing this, doing the two inches up and I was always, yeah, there it is. But it looks really beautiful from the outside. And I ended up having to, um, one of my dogs managed to also snap it further up. And I just decided to do the same joint again because I was pretty happy with it. So um, you can see the sleeves are in the round. I'm not always the biggest fan of that because I get pretty bad ladders. I don't know if you can see see them. Probably can. Um, I get really bad ladders on when I do magic loop, which you'll see is what I'm doing for this. I am not a big fan of doing double pointed needles if I don't have to, because that just means more ladders. So I avoid them if I can. Um, but yeah, so that is this. It's supposed to be the summer weight cardigan, which is why I'm working on it right now, mostly to get it done. Um, maybe I'll even have it done for church next summer. That'd be really nice. When I was traveling last month, I made a point of stopping in at a local yarn shop because I love checking out yarn shops no matter where I am. I have, my my poor husband has been dragged to so many. He's actually very good about it at this point. Um, and it's cool. Some of them are fantastic and I like everything I have. I love others. Not really my style, but you know what? That's cool. Like that's the joy of getting to go to a bunch of different places. Like that's where you get a whole bunch of yarns that you may not have available to you locally because your local yarn shop doesn't carry those lines. I mean, everybody only has so much space. And I'll be honest for a lot of them, like workhorses that I'm comfortable with and I've seen in person, I will order online. But in general, I do prefer to pet the yarn first. Um, part of the joy is I, I love, I love wool, like straight up, it is the most amazing fiber in existence. Um, so I, when I can get to pet new wool, it's very exciting. So in this case, this is Land du Nord, uh, Dolly 125, and it's a DK weight. So each ball is 50 grams. I got four of them, which for me, 200 grams will usually get me a hat and a scarf. I don't know if I'm gonna end up playing yarn chicken this time though, because I may have outwitted myself. I'm gonna figure that out later. So I decided to start with the hat first because I think normally as I do the scarf because it takes longer and then I'm like, ooh, I just want a hat and then I don't care about the hat I make and then it just, I've made a number of hats but I have not necessarily loved any of the hats I've made. So I'm trying a new to me pattern and this is the, what I ended up picking out is the Musselberg hat from Isolde Teague. I saw this on Reddit ironically. So Redditor who posted it and that I will never remember because I don't bookmark anything. Thank you for pointing me towards this hat. It is exactly what I am looking for. Um, I wanted stockinette and I wanted basically a double thickness, not double knit, just a double thickness. I wanted a hat for warmth, um, straight warmth. And I have one. It is literally a cheap watch cap from a thrift shop. It's wool. It's literally like US Navy issue. It's reasonably warm, but it's not particularly attractive. And the way that the crown is done is, I hate to say it's hideous, but it's hideous. So I wanted to basically make, you know, I could have duplicated it, sure. But anyway, I 
I wanted something, like I said, of a double thickness. So this pattern, it's, and this was also a nude to me, it is a center start, but this is actually the inside of the hat. I have not gone an entire, however long I'm supposed to go. You basically knit a giant, like cylinder and then you just you're going to end up turning this piece into the other it'll be fine anyway this is great because it's kind of mindless um once i get past all the increases which i did i did all of the increases in like one day that was pretty awesome now it's just the mindless stocking net and i've been a little bored and i haven't had any good like downtime to take this somewhere this would be the most perfect portable project Ever because I mean like this I can tuck it in my purse and, and sit there and it's mindless literally mindless I mean stockinette miles of stockinette um, I think my original thought was oh I can do this in 50 grams because a fair number of the hats I've done I've been able to eke out in 50 grams they're not double thickness so that was not my brightest idea but um, we'll see how many it takes and then whatever I have left over is going to go into my scarf I'm pretty comfortable with a short scarf because Honestly, I, just how I tuck it, I could also do like a cowl if I prefer, but I, I want something that I can really like tuck up tight here. So probably be a scarf, but it's gonna be something simple. And like I said, it's just mostly I really wanted a matching scarf and hat set. So there you go. Um, I am like I said, pleased with this. The other thing that's really funny is the purples show up very differently based on your lighting. Um, I photographed the yarn. It showed up on my Instagram. It looked like this. Um, I photographed it the other night when I started working on it and it came through very plum colored. Like you could see all the reds. This is an eggplant. Like it is truly a bluish purple, but like I said, it actually is rendering pretty well by camera, but I was surprised just purples were weird like that. Um, so uh, the other thing that was said, this was a multi-stranded. So as I'm knitting it, I was trying to figure out why one of my legs was looking very vertical and the other was very like slanted um and i was like no my tension's pretty good i'm not i know how to do this um discovered so this is milled in italy it is actually um six strands of a two-ply yarn all like put together um the other thing is it does not love i all my needles are high high sharps they, this is very splitty depending on how tightly it is in one spot. It's just how it goes. But I did learn that. So thanks for all the random people on YouTube who have videos that tell you, why does your yarn look like this? Is, you know, once you get like the basic tension issues aside, but yeah, um, so there's that. And then my last project, this is a cowl that I have had. Oh, see, like it's mostly done. Like I, that's the other reason I wanted to start with a hat first is because I really do have uh, most of what I need already. Um, so this is a cowl that I had actually, I self, I say designed, but it's not designed. It's mostly, it's just a repeat. It is a, I can't remember the name of the rib, but anyway, it creates this cool chevron appearance. And I am making this in blue sky fibers wool stock worsted and it comes because seriously I have too much stash not obviously the color I'm using this is charcoal this is a lighter like steel gray does it have a name on it oh this one's called storm cloud anyway it's the same thing it's a hank it's 150 grams so I was like oh I can get a single scarf out of that um I'm right at the end now you'll note I did a professional cast on um my intent originally was to join this to make it as a cowl. I don't know. Like, that's why I'm stuck. Like, if you can see, does it bend down? <laughs> this is how much yarn I have left. Like, it is legit. Like, this thing is pretty much done. I can't just, I basically won't commit <laughs> to what if I mess up doing the grafting. Isn't that the stupidest thing? I should probably just do like a three needle bind off and call it good, but. I got this in my mind. I wanted it to be seamless. Why? Uh, why not, right? Anyway, so that's the, th <laughs> these are like things where I'm like my, seriously, my own worst enemy. And oh, hi, DMC fiber. 
didn't mean for that. See, like all my stuff honestly gets stored pretty much in the same spot. So unfortunately, like I have wool on top of my cross stitch stuff and I have cross stitch stuff in my wool. Um, but again, it's like I do have a warm scarf waiting for me if I would just, I've been working on this for like a year and a half. I got most of it done and then I, that, see, it's making the decisions. <laughs> That's my biggest problem. But this is a really, really pretty, like I love the feel of this. Um, and I will say this with the chevrons, like see how wide it is. And because it shrinks up really nicely, it'll do a really good job of trapping air, which is what keeps you warm. So this will be awesome when I finish it. Thank you for letting me share my knitting with you. Um, I'm not going to do like updates on this nearly as often as I do my cross stitch, just because I'm kind of slower. And obviously you can see, I have a lot less going on by way of like whips, which is a good thing. Seriously, I don't need to have as many like knitting whips as I do cross stitch, but it's like a thing I just kind of wanted to share. So the other part is the going into winter, I really would love to pull out. I have a couple of sweater quantities um, that are actually like, I had already you know earmarked them for making winter sweaters. I do not have a single pullover that I have made. And I love pullover sweaters. So I'm thinking that's gonna be something that hopefully I'm able to really jump in and get done. With motivation, I can have one done in a season. I'm not the fastest sweater knitter, but I mean, like I said, I can get one done. Um, so maybe that'll be the next time be like, hey, I finished it. Hopefully I have some finishes. That would be really awesome to share like, hey. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I have never, like I've, obviously this is a new idea slash format for me. So if you have any insight, feel free, drop me a line. I would love to hear it. I am really slow at responding to comments, but I do read all of them. So thank you so much for having stopped in. I hope you enjoyed what I had to share. And I will see you in knitting, hopefully in about six weeks. Take care and bye.